Looking forward to seeing if he can do it again today. So am I, Spawn. We're into picks and bans for game one of this best of five. HK are going to ban out the Tristana and the Gragas. Already played Gragas twice throughout the course of the group stages. Was very effective on it. Zaya and Renekton removed by Isaris Gaming. Yeah, and I'd like to see actually a Lee Sin ban come across because Crash is a really good Lee Sin player. It's one of the few champions he has in his arsenal to be able to get the early game rolling. However, in saying that Pantheon is right now 100% presence and 100% win rate. So you do also have to respect the strongest champion in Summoner's Rift and get rid of it. And the question is, do HK go for the Syndra that has been so contested in pick and ban, or do they look towards that Lee Sin? Syndra will be the first lock. We'll see if Isaris Gaming take that Lee Sin away from Crash's hands, because he is undefeated on it at this tournament. And the thing is, is that the Syndra is a flex. So on blue side, it's so much more important to take a flex than a power pick at the moment because you need to be able to open up the draft and get some form of winning or at least pushing lanes. You see that response is going to be there. Jace nearly guarantees a pushing lane in the top lane. Yep. He is so hard to deal with. And the Yumi is very interesting because we already heard about the Rakan priority that we're expecting to see out of HKA. We'll see whether this Yumi can do enough in the laning phase to stay alive, to ramp up into kind of that mid-late game damage powerhouse. We'll see if that is the case. Crash will get his hands on the Lee Sin and Hong Kong Attitude at the moment looking to see if they want their support locked in here. The Rakan is something we've talked about. Pike gives you a bit more aggression in the bottom lane. We tend to see Nautiluses picked into the Yumi as well, something that can be just that little bit further forward in the 2v2 matchup. I would almost expect this to be a Kai'Sa pickup, to be honest, just because support pool hasn't really been hit if they are comfortable yeah. on the pike. Rakan, Nautilus, all these things still available. Ejim would be yelling at me, say Volley Bear, because it's a really good matchup yeah. into Yumi, but I'm not going to mention that because we haven't seen it so far. And that's very interesting that they are willing to prioritize pike this early. It makes me believe that maybe that is their favorite matchup into Jace top. Jace is a lane bully, yeah. and we did see G2 bring this out actually at MSI, where this was a preferred matchup for them as well. We saw it played yesterday by Loki as well into Dam One, of course, on the losing side of that matchup, but that was a bit of a skill discrepancy between those two top laners, I think we can say. Pike is the lock. Vladimir locked in here. Expect that to go either towards Seiya in the mid lane. He's played it twice, or of course Bugax in the top. A little bit of flexibility still from this Isarus gaming lineup with the Jace and the Vladimir being able to flex between mid and top. Yeah, it certainly can. However, I would expect that to be Seiya's Vladimir. I think Warangelis would be looking for an Ezreal pickup here to potentially partner with the Yumi. We've seen how good he is, and maybe that should be a respect ban from HKA. Just want to jump back on the pike, however. Kaiwing's played it five times, three. Z has played it zero, so I do expect that to actually be a support. Yep. Which is just a lot of priority put on the land swimmer. Yeah, the land swimmer. What, what, what do you call it? Pike. All right, that makes more sense, I yep. think. I think it does, just slightly. Keanu is the next man here for Isarus, getting rid of a very strong power pick. The Rexai removed by HK alongside the Jarvan, so now Oddi is really going down in his pool. Things like the Skarner, the Hecarim, the Trundle are in his wheelhouse. He has also played one Leona game this split, but I don't think we should focus too much on that. Yeah, I think that's a little bit more of an anomaly than a pickup. Also, things like the Olaf, like, there are very safe tempo junglers available. Skana is going to be the pick. I like Skana when I talk about tempo junglers because very rarely do you have tanks that can clear as quickly as the carries. However, Skana is certainly the quickest clearing tank, in my opinion. As soon as you get the shrines, you can just scuttle around, yep. and everyone has to start paying the tax. I talk about it a lot, but the QSS tax, especially if you're not having the best games, as Oddie hasn't been, just allowing, you know, that 5,000 gold sink for the team to go across already gives you an advantage. Incredibly expensive to deal with. Nar will be the next lock here for 3Z. Didn't play that in the regular season, so that's going to be a second pick at Worlds for him. And that's interesting, because Jace smashes Nar. Yeah. Like, that is not a good matchup oh, for whatsoever for the Nar player. So we'll see whether he is able to at least survive that landing phase, because Bugax has become incredibly important for Isaris Gaming this tournament. Yeah, so sorry, here, I was thinking about what AD carry they were gonna pick, which is why I was surprised by the TF lock-in, but of course, Syndra is flexible. We talked about it at the start of pick and ban. That means we will see Unify taking Syndra down towards the bottom side. Twisted Fate will be on mission in mid lane. And we might want to point out that Vladimir can also be a bottom laner, and that Warangulus used to be a mid laner, so he is very comfortable on mages. Vladimir plus Yumi, is 
quite a difficult lane to deal with just because of the sustain and the inability to push them out. That's actually what we're going to see. That's going to be Sayers Akali most likely picked up. Yeah, quite possibly in the mid lane there. We'll see what they go do lock in in the end. But I want to come back to the, the discussion we were having and the analyst test was having about the fast paced team versus the slower paced team, the early game team versus the mid game team. With Isuris Gaming being the team we expect to have more action early, do you think their draft allows them to do that? I think it does through the solo lanes, right? I expect both of these solo lanes to be able to push in and to be able to get control. Once level six is there, they're also going to be able to pair up with Oddi a lot. However, I think what they've done is very smart here in that they've guaranteed the late game. As soon as you lock in something like Vladimir, like Yumi, your late game becomes incredibly powerful. And this team knows that there is an opportunity that if they fumble a play, that HKA will take them late. So they need to have some scaling there to be able to out team fight. Definitely makes a lot of sense. We'll see how much impact Crash can have in the early game for HKA. They have some scaling on their side as well. Of course, Asindra does fall off a little bit in damage as the game progresses. But across the board, both these teams have Pretty strong compositions for what they've tended to do through groups. Yeah, and the thing about HKA's comp is I think it will play the map very nicely. Pike is able to get around the map super quickly. We mentioned that yesterday. Lee Sin is very good at attacking side lanes early. And then TF is kind of the king of tying this all together and propping up your weak side. So I do like what HKA has put together in terms of macro, but that means that they're playing against more of a brute force comp with a Vladimir. And we always say this, if your three gets caught out, you just lose the game when you play one through one Let's see if HKA can play around Isurus Gaming's map play. It's the first game of the best of five. It's the LMS third seed versus the number one seed from the Liga Latinoamerica. Isurus Gaming take on HKA, HKA as we jump on to the Summoner's Rift. And this is such a big best of five for both these teams. HKA, the last time they were in playing knockouts, they got removed by Fnatic, demolished 3-0 in 2017. Isurus Gaming, where we've never seen a team from Latin America make it all the way into the group stages, they will want to be the first. Yeah, and whilst we should be very aware of the history that happened with HKA and the fact that they came second in group stage and then lost to Fnatic, I don't think there are too many similarities because this time around they come out in first and they've drawn a much weaker opponent in comparison to Fnatic, right? That was a best of five that was always going to be very difficult for HKA to win. I think this time around they should be considered as a favorite going in. Uh, seed one teams generally win these best of five matchups and best of five. There is a lot more margin for error. It's not like best of one upsets. So whilst the analyst is very confident in Isaris, I think that Isaris did have a very shaky start to this world. And they will need to play significantly better if they hope to pick up the best of five victory today. Definitely agree with you there, Spawn. Early on, Crash is going to start at his blue. It looks like Odi will be at his red buff. Of course, Skarner, really not an early ganking jungler. We'll be looking for that level six. Bugax trying to get in here. Just be a little bit of a nuisance. Can get a lot of damage down on the Jace early on. Crash took safeguard the shield first on Lee Sin, which is what you tend to do in the jungle, but means they can't really aggress on to Bugax. That's very interesting, a topside start. I wonder whether Crash was hoping to be able to invade Oddi's topside jungle and maybe split the map against the Jace. That would mean that maybe push him off some farm, get him out of this early game push. So credit to Bugax being able to scout that out. Gonna be a little bit of action bottom lane, but Vladimir Yumi is a really annoying lane to actually yep. deal with. Um, so we'll see whether Syndra and Pike do have the damage. I feel at level six, they should win the all in. I think they do, but if you get a good Sanguine pull, say the Unleashed Power gets Sanguine pulled, then you're really not going to be able to do too much more. I also worry a little bit for them, because usually what you'd see into like a Vladimir or an Aatrox lane is an early executioner's calling from your AD carry. But it's going to be a while before you get Morello Nomicon. Maybe Kaiwing will go towards an executioner's calling first item on the pike. Yeah, I'd like to see the adaptation. However, that's the first creep wave crashing, and it's yep. nearly the entirety of a plate. Also, pretty important to point out the fact that Unified has gone with Comet. I feel like a lot of Syndras prefer to go with Electrocute mm -hmm. in this matchup, just because it is pretty easy after the pull to guarantee the spells and the burst damage is really important versus Vlad. They do have themselves a summoner combat advantage as well in the bottom lane. They've taken the heal, and it is going to be Teleport coming out of Warangulus. So in all-ins, they should have the edge. Definitely should. You can see the CS lead building up in the top lane for Bugax. You talked about how strong Jace is into the Nar already. Almost 15 farm up. There is a bit of a wave coming in here. It's probably about 5 CS that HK, uh, that uh, 3Z could get for HKO. But it's really not that much 
that he's going to be able to manage to get back from this. And Bugak's in a strong commanding position. And the thing about Jace is he has such good turret pressure early. He knows at least in path away, so he feels incredibly comfortable doing this. And the punish from Airy Jace is just so big. He doesn't continue to take turret aggro. He hasn't got something like a corrupting potions or any of that nonsense. So he's just going to make 3Z suffer for every single creep he wants to go under this turret. And I expect this lane to continue to be pretty bad. And one of the reasons we focus on the early game leads so much is the difference in playstyle through the early game for these two teams. Isra's gaming in the group stage were very much about getting an early lead. Yes, they'd sacrifice a lot of deaths for it, but usually they'd be picking up more kills than deaths and getting these plates down early, whereas HKA tend to take things just that little bit slow. And having spoken to people behind the scenes, this is what Isra thought was their biggest kind of strength coming in. They were coming into a very slow group and they could play that 10 to 20 minute mark and look to explode a game and try and take over I think that HKA is another slow team and they will still have similar phase. But once again, it needs to be cleaner execution because whilst that was their hope coming in to this world's play-ins groups, it certainly was not how it ended. Well, Angela's hooked up here. The Ignite is ticking here from Kewing. That's going to put the Grievous Wounds down. Well, Angela's going to try and sustain up. Tide of Blood comes out. Sanguine Pool used. Well, Angelus gets underneath the tower, but here comes Oddi to the mid lane. Mission has the flash, but has nowhere to go. First blood to Isarus Gaming. And a great gank here from Oddi. You saw the all-in happening bottom lane, but Oddi able to pounce early. We said that Saya was one of those players that we wanted to track. Being able to get him that early game kill, especially into a side lane matchup like TF, is going to be very important. So good for him early on. Phage has been picked up on mission, so he's that little bit tankier now. It's a bit harder for Saya to take him in a pure 1v1, but we'll start seeing Saya building up towards that Hextech Gunblade, the first big item on the Akali. And I feel like we've been talking a lot about the struggles that Isarus Gaming had in playing groups. However, a lot of what was centered around this duo, Oddi and Saya not carrying their weight. They're the two veterans on the lineup. So I think that that gank, while pretty simple, is a really great place for this series to start for ISG. You can see Saya throughout the regular season, the closing season of the Latin, uh, Latino America League, he was, although he didn't do that much damage for his team, he was still participating a lot in the kills, the KP, and he was still getting a lot a gold lead early on. In groups here at Worlds, he's really struggled to have an impact for his team. Yeah, he certainly has, and I think that, once again, that comes down to how you're playing around the jungler and how the rest of the map is assisting you to a certain point, but also the fact that Saya just kind of played badly yeah. and not to his own level. We've seen this guy perform internationally before. And uh, he would be taking this as a personal challenge because Crash and Mission certainly outperformed during group stage play, Oddi and Saya, and they would know as the two veterans that they have to at least do their job and neutralize that matchup today for Isaris to have any chance. It does. Crash here, getting control of the bottom side river. Mission now six has that destiny, could look for a gank in one of these side lanes. Uh, no summoners on slow. He's burnt the exhaust and the heal. While Angela still has his flash, so if HKA get a good engage down towards the bottom, they could find something. I do want to point out what just happened on the bottom side of the map. Those two wards are going to be very crucial for fighting out this Karna. He is level six, however, it's top side. Oh, he just lands the impale straight away. 3Z not flashing early on, and Bugax looking for the kill. Flash away from 3Z. Bugax will take it in the end. And that's pretty disappointing from 3Z because they had perfect information on the bottom side of the map, so they knew exactly where Oddy wasn't. That means he should be playing very respectfully respectfully topside, and if he needs his wave in, Crash needs to be there to help him. You can't just get picked off like that. That means both solo laners now very far ahead for Isaris Gaming. And this is a little bit of a nothing early game from HKA. Whilst we've been very complimentary of Crash, he has not been able to get all of that much done. Hasn't found too much at all. Did steal away a blue here, but that's going to be answered by Oddi as he's gone into the HKA jungle. And I do want to talk about how that Jace is really taking command of the top lane now with a kill, with a serrated Dirk. He is 700 gold ahead of his lane opponent. And that's basically the gold lead that Isra's have right now. And the pressure that Jace puts on turrets means that gold leads can explode. He's not like a melee top lane bully. He does have that range form. And I don't think that this lineup from HKA will actually pressure him all that much in team fights either. There's not all that much back line dive. He should be able to land his poke at the start of the fight. And uh, it, this could be getting very bad. I mean, it's, it's still an equal gold lead. Bottom lane is going heavily in favor. Hold that thought. Destiny coming out. We wondered where the first TF ult would be. The flash is not available for Bugax. Caught underneath the tower. The Nar comes in. This is a great gank from HKA. They will get their first kill of the best of five. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the wing is going to land a skewer. While Angela's looking for Jace, won't be able to find anything more. And that was a great 
first teleport there from Mission. Being able to use that Destiny to get up in the top lane, that lane that was really suffering. As we mentioned, this bottom lane is going very heavily in favor of HKA. They've been able to get themselves a similar lead in the bottom lane as what was happening top. Um, but we do expect the Vladimir to be able to scale very well into the matchup. So not necessarily as much cause for concern. Yumi also is just a terrific scaling support. The fact that she goes towards things like the Luden's Echo right now seems very unfair. <laughs> it's very frustrating when you're playing against her. Just constant poke coming out from that prowling projectile. I know the nerfs are there, right? I know that it's like a 20% slow now and it's supposed to feel much better, but it does kind of feel like as long as you have a frontliner to jump on, she can just perma slow you. Can't you touch her. It's like, how do I get to you? I have to kill this meat tank of a man to try and get through you. Here, obviously, Val Vladimir is that tank and has a lot of escape tools alongside being pretty darn tanky when he wants to be. And not only Vladimir, I mean, this is going to be a Predator Skana running at you with maybe even a Righteous Glory in the mid game, yep. right? This is going to be a very quick composition. When they want to start team fights. they're practically going to be able to do it at will. So it's all about being able to navigate it, having your side lane set up, you know, not getting caught out in those situations. And that means that the Twisted Fate, as well as Anar, needs to be able to get ahead. You can see a decision made here by HKA. They know it's coming up to that 10 minute mark. So Unified and Kawing are on their way up towards this Rift Herald. Well, Angelus doesn't have the TP. He won't be able to join a fight if it starts. Oddie's playing up towards top, but he's sitting on a ward. Destiny here. not available, but this is everyone rotating up. The wing's gonna find out. Oddy Nam into the wall off towards the top side of the fight as Bugax goes low. 3Z gonna catch him out for the moment. Oddie's the one to fall. Death from below as X marks the spot of Oddie's demise. Here's the follow up. It's a double. And HKA find the perfect rotation to find their pits. Yeah, and once again, it's going to be Oddie thinks that he has the information, was sitting on a control ward medic, but just did not drop it in the brush. That means the rotation from HKA was Flawless. They should be able to take this top lane turret. They're going to be able to save the Herald. And the gold lead has just exploded. Yeah, two and a, uh, 2,200, almost two and a half thousand gold lead now for HKA. Those death from below procs getting you all that extra gold. Now you're taking plates. Don't even need to use Rift Herald in the top lane because you're going to take that tower down without its assistance. That opens you up to use it mid. We're only 10 and a half minutes into the game. We could be looking at 10 or more plates here for HKA. Yeah, we certainly could be. And I mean, the main benefactor of all of this is actually the bottom lane. You know, when you have a look at dragging that pike into the play, being able to get the death from below, Pike is a support that also scales very well from items. I feel like I've been talking about the fact that that is what Yumi's MO is at the moment. But let's not forget that he does have the Execute available. And Bugax just feels like he can play as aggressively as he wants to because he has Oddy here. However, the early rotation from the bottom lane, well spotted, mid lane. Mission flashes away. Oddy decides he doesn't want to use the Impale. Like ships in the night. Yeah. Except one of them with the ability to blink a short distance. Exactly, like ships in the night. Exactly. I don't know what type of ships you're, you're using there, Spawn. Some upside down stuff that's going on in Australia. But as you say, mission getting away now has to teleport in. That means his flash is down, so what he can look for a peak gank towards the mid lane. But at the moment, everything is in HKA's control. They have that 3,000 gold lead. They've got the Rift Help in mid whenever they want to use it. And they can look for their second dragon of the game. Instead, they're going bot Kuing, trying to get onto War Angelos, who pops a Sanguine Pool to escape the scatter of the week. And now it's a 3,000 gold lead, and they're also dropping Herald. Only 12 minutes in the game. This should be another turret falling. Quite easily 10 plates here for HKA. Isuus Gaming only picking up a couple across the map. Two in the bottom lane, one in the mid. Hemo Plague doesn't really do too much there at all. Angelus will be able to clear out the wave in the end, but HKA are looking devastating early on here. And we, we asked what Crash was doing. Well, Crash has now really come alive. All of HKA have come alive as a team. And now you have to wonder how are Isuus Gaming going to claw their way back into this game? Yeah, and kind of a strange early game, right? Because it looked like Isuus were winning mid and they were winning top lane. And when you have control over the solo lanes, it is very hard for the enemy team to be able to generate pressure. But whilst we said it was Crash, I think it was the trio of Crash, Unified, and Kai Wing being able to take one pushing lane and rotate around the map to generate advantages. It was perfectly at that 10 minute mark. And you can see now that Isaris are very much on the back foot. And when this happened in group stage, Isaris just did nothing yeah. throughout the entirety of the mid game. So HKA certainly had the game back heavily in their turns. HK haven't always been the most proactive team with a lead though, so we'll see if they can keep this tempo up, if they can keep the pace of the game going, keep clocking through these towers, because the first set of turrets is always the easiest. It's very simple to take them, you don't have to go too far, you don't have to set up too much vision to take that out of tier one. 
We'll see after HKA do try and break through this mid lane tower, whether they can get some deep vision in, deep wards in, and then look towards those Baron plays, towards those flank plays that we expect from them. Yeah, and the thing is, is I still don't know necessarily whether they win this top lane split push. So I expect 3Z to play a very defensive side of the map. Does not want to be caught out by Oddy and Bugax. So wherever the TF is, you know, now that he has a quick silver sash, now that he has the up, uh, the Trinity Force completed to be the side of the map that they actually push play towards, then it's about being getting uh, the ability to get control of one side of the jungle and force them off mid lane turret. It's very hard to dive of Vladimir as well as the Skana. However, you feel like that's the stage of the game that we're at only 13 minutes in. They need to be able to continue this gold lead rolling. They really do. We'll see if they can manage to do it. First couple of Skarner taxes have been paid. Kai Wing and Mission getting themselves QSSs before even level two boots on a mission, just roaming around the map as quickly as he can. But the thing is, is if you're even in gold, this feels shocking, right? You spent like 3,000 gold on picking up two items that you don't really want at this stage of the game. Mate, you're 5,000 gold up at yeah, the moment. You don't really fine. care what you're buying. You're just beating people over the head with your wallet in every single one of these team fights. So I'm really confident that HKA kind of are giggling about the Skarn attacks at the moment. Oddy, whilst having two very good early game ganks, has fallen off a little bit yeah. now. And as I said, what, 3Z is, even has the ability to push in. So everywhere on the map seems to be a playground right now for HKA. And at the moment, Israels are just trying to find ways to get some items under their belts. No completed item on War Angelus. Hextech Gunblade is there for Seiya. Still, Bugax has yet to complete his first item as well. So they are just so far behind when you look across the board and see a Lude and see a Trinity Force. See a Trin uh, the Triforce with a QSS as well. That's so far ahead here for HKA. War Angelus pops the Sanguine Pool a little bit earlier as Kaiwing lands the Bone Skewer. Hemo Plague was used. It's just to clear out the wave and try and dissuade HKA from going any further for the fight. However, they do get the first anti dive shield out. That's the Humo Plague there from the Vladimir that he's going to make it very punishing to dive a turret. However, Yumi didn't use the ultimate. Oddy still hold on to the Bone Skewer as well. So this is going to be a hard turret to crack. They have got the first few steps underway. However, that's a very good weak side ward underneath mid lane. And they've been able to push in with 3Z and now group up. See whether ISG can prevent this from falling. Doesn't look like it's gonna be the case. Too easy for HKA to break through that tier one of turrets. And now their eyes will be set on the jungle of Isris. It's the highest gold lead HKA have had at 15 minutes at Worlds, uh, 4.6K. And their average is 765 gold ahead at the 15 minute mark. So quite a difference between how they played in groups and how they're playing in this game. Yeah, and the more things change in League of Legends, apparently the more they stay the same because we've been saying that Group states didn't go as expected. The teams were able to create upsets. But in these best of fives, the seed one teams really have shown up to play. This is a great early game at 15 minutes that HKA have been put, able to put together. And even the members of Isaris that had great playing stages like Bugax, like Warangulus and Slow have been under a lot of pressure this game. I do think that whilst we keep mentioning, you know, Warangulus was a mid laner, he can play these majors. Maybe the comp feels a little bit different if you're running something more a little bit traditional like Ezreal, where you have pressure in all three lanes and you don't allow Unified and Kai Wing to rotate around the map. It definitely might have helped them out playing something they're just a little bit more used to, but Isaris, I'm sure, had a game plan coming in. Maybe it hasn't gone that well so far, but we talked about in picks and bans. They have scaling options. If they make mistakes early on, they do have some options as they get later on into the game with the, with the Vladimir, with the Yumi later. But there's a difference between having scaling options and doing nothing. I mean, that's true. And I feel like this has happened. Oh, hold the thought. Kai Wing looking for the bone skewer. Sayer trying to dodge around. Skewer still connects, but Sayer flips away. Members are coming. Yeah, Oddy's on his way. Has the Predator. Mission was coming in as well. Just walked into the lane. Okay, so Sayer does have to burn his ultimate. Not really all that much traded in response from HKA. But this is what I mean. There is a big difference between saying we're scaling, we're fine, we're absorbing farm and teams running in and taking over complete control of your jungle, denying you experience, denying you camps. Oddy still is nowhere near to where he wants to be in his build, right? So they have to be able to find ways to still get him gold. This might be one of those opportunities. Skana alongside the Yumi on the chase, impale back, 3Z looking for the Mega, gets the Nar back, but doesn't really have anywhere to go. Still has his flash in hand, but can't do too much. It's to find a pick in the top lane. I feel like they would have loved that kill to go over to Bugax. However, Oddy is able to secure it for his team. Three members getting there. They don't really lose out on all that much apart from a bottom side jungle. But that control for the Dragon is now firmly in HKA's favor. 
It is going to be a Mountain Drake, and these Drakes are very important as the game progresses, being able to unlock things like Baron, you know, accelerate the turret pushing. And in fact, they'll in even let the bottom lane turret drop. I think you're trading this, right? Bugax says, well, I can get a tower in the top lane. Can we really protect it safely when we don't have control of our jungle, when all five members, uh, four members from HKA could be there in a moment? Yeah, absolutely true. I do think that they could have just allowed that top lane wave to hit turret, bounce back in Bugax's favor. He would have got the creep, sure. He misses out on a little bit of turret gold, but I do think the trading objectives is a little bit rough. Uh, when you're trading multiple, right? You know, yeah. jungle camps, turret, into dragon. Now the top side control becomes very easy to secure for HKA. I do think that taking tempo resets when you're behind is very important to be able to set up necessary picks. And obviously, Isaris Gaming certainly not going for that. Just saying, you know what, we're fine. We're going to accumulate gold. We're going to try and scale a little bit further into this game. It's taking them a while, though. We are only 19 minutes in. Last time we cast an Isaris Gaming game, it went 65 minutes long. So ah, about a third of the way there. Yeah, though. about a third of the way there. We'll see if this game continues to that great length or whether one of these teams is able to close it out before then. Two items now complete on mission. He's finished his wit's end. Has about a 1,500 gold lead over Sayer as well in that mid lane. So he's in a very powerful position here on the Twisted Fate. Wit's end's an interesting item. It's very gold really? efficient. Yeah, it's incredibly gold efficient. It's, like, as long as you have the levels to about level 12, I think it's one of the most gold efficient items in the game. However, when you have a look at what mission is going to be doing this game, I think maybe Hex Drinker against Sayer would have been more useful because a lot of the burst damage coming out gives you also a little bit more of that AD to siege down turrets. Means I, yeah, I can understand that. Maybe going for a little bit more team fight. I can't really see it, right? Because the thing about magic resistance is it scales well with health and shields. Yes. And obviously, Hex Drinker has the additional component of having a slight shield there, and that's going to help you QSS. That's probably going to be Merc Treads coming in as well. All of these things do start to add up. If you just go flat resistances and you don't have all that much health, obviously just a little bit of health from the Phage in the component of Trinity Force, it's just not going to be mathematically probably the best build you can go for tanky stats versus magic damage users. I understand the logic. You have to remember how much pressure these guys are under in the moment to make a decision. Yep. I guess you could see like if Say it continues to trade in with his Q. If War Angelus is there trading in with a few key Qs, the extra life steal you yep. get back out of it when you're below 33% health might help. But and the other thing is, if you're not used to playing Marksman, and I talk to Bryce about this all the time on Egium, he says attack speed just feels good. Yes. It allows you to weave your abilities and get things going like much more naturally than if you have perfect feel of playing, you know, that Marksman type role. So maybe a Band-Aid solution as well in that case. Oddy flashing forward, looking for Crash. Can't quite find the connection, but Kaiwing now a little bit over push. Sayer going in. Not going to chase any further. And that's a little bit of a hint at where that Akali nerf really hit Akali. Yeah. In that situation where stun is still on R1, I feel like that would have been a pick onto Kaiwing. However, not there, just going to have the damage component. So everyone's able to exit stage left, and Akali just has to kind of watch them go. HK may have overstayed here. Wangelis well, does have a flank position. Oddy and Slow teaming up in the jungle. You mentioned the Skana Yumi does work incredibly well. Yeah, look, that's Scorpion a, Cat, I guess it's called. That's an equal numbers fight, however, and they do have TF Ultimate. One of the biggest benefits of TFs during team fights is just the ability to press R and have perfect information of exactly what's happening. It means your setup can be a little bit slower. And I don't feel like when you're 7,000 gold, you want to fight in an equal numbers fight. However, with Baron started up, they might have to. Yeah, Baron has been started. Oddy was uh, starting to back away, but now he'll realize that perhaps something's going on. There's no Blast Gun. Oh, there's a Blast Gun there for him to try and get in. Of course, he hasn't got the Flash. Teleport coming in here by HKA. Oddy is going to look for the steal. Destiny comes in. While Angelus now on the flank. Here goes Oddy trying to get in. Stunned up straight away. The final chapter coming in as well. As Isra's looking for the fight, but the Baron has been secured by Crash. And now all of Isra's are diving into the pit. Diving in for that fight, maybe to get themselves back in this game, but they need to find catches. 3Z managed to jump out of the back, and Isra still haven't found the connection. It looks like Mission's gonna get away. Crash chased off towards the top side here. Unified, Shot Blast does not connect. And now all of HKA can actually just collapse on this. Slow is with Bugax. It will be a 2v4 if they make this out play. Bugax gonna jump in onto 3Z. Unified gets a knockback. Slow jumps off. Bugax down. Unified takes the kill. Another goes down for Kai Wing. And HKA clean up around the Baron. And now it's a 10,000 gold lead. And HKA have the Baron, have everyone up and alive. I think the mission fell down at the start of that, but taking a look, this is sketchy. This is very dangerous. They didn't pop the blast cone. Yeah. That should be always step number one on Baron's setup. It gets down to about a thousand. If any damage came out from Isaris onto the Baron buff when Oddy is still alive, you know, an accelerated shock blast, even some damage from Vlad, that could have certainly been a steal. And then HKA, 
they do the right thing. They split, they make sure that at least some members are going to live. But the decision-making from Isaris is once again so strange. Chasing into an area where you know that three members have just exited towards. You're now effectively fighting a 2v4 with two members trying to siege mid lane turret. This is just not a team playing cohesive League of Legends right now. Not at all, and Hong Kong Attitude are making them pay for it. Now HKA gonna go for that 1-3-1 one, one split that we talked about all the way back in pick and bands. 3Z up towards the top lane. Mission down towards the bottom. HKA pushing in mid with the last three members. That turret's almost fallen. The inhib tower almost down here in the bottom lane. Crash is gonna jump in. That's the inhib tower gone. And now HKA can start to siege onto this inhibitor in the bottom lane. And this is only 24 minutes into the game, Medic. This game has been accelerated so quickly. We kept saying that HKA were the team that maybe wanted to scale coming into this best of five and that Isaris would be more comfortable with the pace of the series. However, HKA is showing that they're no slouches when they get the correct compositions. They're also willing to skirmish very heavily and take control of areas of the map. I mean, this is so much quicker for them. The average game time so far this tournament is 33 and a half minutes. And right now, it looks like they could end it in the next couple. Baron's still oh. up for a minute. While Angelus knocked back, goes into the Sanguine Pool, will stop the Unleashed Power from doing any damage. But meanwhile, again in the bottom lane, Mission is just chipping away at this inhibitor. And Oddy really can't react, isn't going forward. Crash jumping towards his enemy man, but will bounce back. Bugax now trying to trade against 3Z, but 3Z has Mega on away. While Angelus going in the final chapter, trying to get the damage in. 3Z almost on the back line. He's going to come in with the Mega Nar. Crash already takes down slow, and now while Angelus has to get under the turret. Great Sanguine pull to dodge out from the Nar, but the tower has fallen, and HKA are on the warpath. Jumping into the back line. Saya just about takes out Crash, but here comes Mission with the Destiny, while Angelus goes golden. Bugax trying to open up. 3Z on the front line as Bugax pulled back. Unify will knock him back with the Scatter of the Week, and in Instead, HKA say, we just want the in here. Oddy trying to find a connection here from the side. Doesn't have the ult, only has the smite for the slow. HKA will get out with two inhibitors down. A very even team fight, but the base now in ruin for Isaris Gaming. HKA just know exactly when they need to back away. And I love the patience to sit in 1-3-1 and just break open the base in multiple areas. The next push after this dragon and the recall has been in should be the final one of the game. 13,000 gold now, the lead at only 25 minutes in. It has been an exemplary performance from HKA. This team fight, a little bit messy, you have to say, but they got what they wanted out of the end of it. Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, the patience to sit TF bottom lane, they'd already started to pressure out Warangulus and slow. And the damage is just insane from the bottom lane of the Syndra and the Pike. You know, great flank from 3Z coming in to ensure the back end of this team fight. You've got to remember the Bugas had already been forced out. And, uh, you know, low health bars everywhere, but it always looked like HKA with a team pressing forward and Isaris were playing on the back foot. Definitely did. Now the question for HKA is, do you just wait for the next Baron? Because you can. Those inhibitors will not have respawned in that time. You don't need to. You can five-man push mid. You can get the pressure in from a side lane with Mission, who can then Destiny into the fight if you want. But if you want to be as safe as houses, you could just wait for that next objective. I think if this was a best of one, you can make the argument of, let's wait for Baron. Let's just ensure that we get the points on the board. In a best of five, especially in game one, how you win is equally as important. You know, get Isaris on the back foot. Make them start questioning what their game plan and their preparation was coming into this. They have shown their hand that they want to play Mages bottom lane and that they want to be able to pressure top early. Well, that hasn't worked. If you close them out in 25 minutes with this kind of composition, they have to go back to the drawing board. It looks like that was what HKA want to do. 3Z on the Nar is in the bottom lane, pushing in. Just gone Mega Kaiwin. Looking for Bugax here. There's no flash. The Destiny coming out. Bugax stun lock. No way to get away from that. Unified now on a killing spree. 3 0 3 on this Syndra. And that gold lead continues to skyrocket through HKA. 15,000 ahead. 27 minutes in the game. HKA step into the base of Isarus. And Isarus really have no way of stopping them. And you can see that the waves are starting to come in. The pressure is going to be there. They need to make the call on Unified. However, the base might just die. Call is to chase onto Unified. Oddy going in with the Predator. Flashes forward as well, but really not doing too much. Wangelis caught on the backside of the fight. Look at the damage onto Unified. He's almost fallen, but meanwhile, the base is the target. 3Z and Mission just stepped straight in through the front door. And Isaris allowed them to step into their own home. HKA with a dominant performance here in game one. will go 1-0 up in this series. That was a shellacking. I mean, as the Nexus is about to fall down, HKA, after going down 0-2 in laning phase, just flip the switch at 10 minutes. They get the kills top lane. They translate it into an early Herald and two towers. And after that, there was just no room 
for Issa is gaming to work their way back in. You can see HKA have a little chat about it afterwards, but not really too much to talk about. That was by the book League of Legends most of the game. And you saw in their pre-game interview, this is a proud team. They're from a proud region. They said, sure, the LMS, lately, we haven't done that great, but we want to give our fans something to be proud of. Yeah.